Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I'm going to share some fun art journal techniques with you today, and we're going to use some kid supplies. We're going to use some supplies you probably already have, and uh, we're going to get some use out of your stuff. So these are fun. These are, um, I dug these out of my drawer. These are actually kid supplies. They're called Rainbow Brush, and um, I found some at a discount shop, really cheap, and they're kind of neat because you can hook them together like this, and then you've got this huge brush. Like I hooked these two together, and um, and I did the word art, the A for art and the S for soul. So let me just show you how they go together here. So you snap them together, and then you got the little rusty parts in the caps from the back, and then you've got that really wide nib. And then let me just grab this scrap piece of watercolor paper. I can just kind of show you. Then you can you'll squeeze them together. And you can, this is watercolor paper, so it's not the best, but you can make your marks like that. I might need to uh, moisturize the uh, the red one a little bit because it looks a little dried out. But, you know, I just wanted to share that with you in case you have um, you have these and you don't really know what to do with them. Um, you can also use a dip pen or whatever. It's just kind of a, just a fun technique. You could take a piece of cardboard, like matte board, and put both colors of ink on there and do a similar effect. But what I really wanted to show you is the way I did this, um, this flower. Uh, I drew it with... Um, Mod Podge in a small applicator bottle, and this applicator bottle comes from uh, Tilly's Bridge, uh, and I'll put a link below to where you can purchase this. They sent me these to try, and they're really fun. I can't—I've been using them for a month, the same bottles, and they have not clogged. So I'm pretty excited because I have a hard time with fine tip glue applicators, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. So what I did was I drew the image in glue, and then. Um, and then you let that dry and then you can watercolor over it and you get a really cool resist effect and then after it's all dry you can go over it with like a q-tip just on the glue areas and you can remove the any any uh color that's stuck on that if you want to um i just want to maybe get any big spots you got to be careful though because if you go over the watercolor um it will lift that up as well on the paper so um so that's a technique we are going to do today um, that's pretty dry. All right, so here's another one that I did just to practice, just on some regular cardstock. So it'll work on whatever paper you have. And I already wiped off the uh, the stuff in the lines there. And here's the one we're going to color. But first, I just want to show you that technique on how to um, how to use this. So these little applicators, you want to store them. I keep them in a little margarine tub pointing down and they recommend to keep the bottle pretty full and that makes total sense I think because um, my glues are always drying in the tips even though I cap them off and I think because this is a pin that goes all the way down and you keep it down you're keeping the tip of the glue wet and moist and all any harder glue would be up at the top so it totally makes sense and I have one with just Elmer's glue in it and I think you could use any glue Mod Podge glossy Mod Podge just works really well and I buy it by the gallon so what I'm going to do is I think I'll do some Fox Glove I'm just going to do it really quick I like to kind of hold the um, applicator at an angle and I'm just and it's gonna be hard to see because it's pretty much white on white but I just wanted to show you um, kind of how I do it and if you can go kind of smoothly it will work a little bit better because then you won't get globs and in fact I'm gonna try zooming in I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this any better but I'm gonna try anyway there we go can you see that I can see it on my monitor, so I'm hoping you can see it too. And um, I'll just put another little flower over here. Just do the bell part of the fox glove first. And, you know, don't try to be perfect. We're drawing with glue, for goodness sake. You know, this is not going in a museum. And, you know, you can make a whole vine of these or stem of these. You know, just have fun with it. I would kind of do it over to the edge a little bit more if I were you, just so you have room for some journaling later. And you can actually write really well with this. I had my little, let me see if I can pull up my Pinterest board with quotes on it, just so I can use something I was intending on using. Boy, I'm so prepared. Actually, this was open, but um, <laughs> but it goes to sleep on me. So what I'll do is I'll just slide this over. And uh, I've got the quote, never let a small setback ruin your future. And I'll just do the word never, just so you can see and we can get onto the painting. So, um, N E V E. So you can see how easy it is to, to sketch with those uh, little pens. So my goal now will be not to stick my hand in it during the rest of this tutorial. So let me zoom out so you can um, see the other page of my journal. And so I'm done with this. So what I'm going to do is put it 
point side down. So I will have a link to this, um, but if you want to just Google it, the um, the website is Tilly's Bridge. It's at uh, zibit.com forward slash Tilly's Bridge. So if you want to find that and you're not on the computer, you're watching it on your TV or whatever, and you want to go back later and look for it, just uh, Google Tilly's Bridge and you'll find it. All right, I'm going to use watercolors. I've got my, I got some Yarko ones here. Use whatever you have. You could use inks. Doesn't really matter. Just something that will resist. And I'm going to get a nice juicy round paintbrush. I honestly, I've like, <laughs> what happened? I had like nothing out here ready to go. Um, I'm just going to grab some paints and just add it. See, if I go outside of the lines, you can really see the lines there. And not that I really wanted to do that, but I wanted to show you how, uh, how irresistible this technique is. I'll do a little bit of blue in there. I really like this mixed media paper, this uh, Canson XL mixed media journal. I find it really uh, performs well with inky and watercolory techniques. And I like to let my, my paint just kind of float around and flow. You know, I got a picture of, I need to see the coloring of a bird of paradise here, so I'm just flipping through a book that I have. It's got a bunch of photographs in it. I hope like that shouldn't have been green, but you know what? It's my journal. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I'm going to do some oranges. And I just really like the way it looks as it starts to resist there. Count the colors mixed together for more of a um, earthy color and you know take your time on it I'm just kind of wanted I want to get the inspiration out there so you can run out and try it oops that's supposed to be purple I think yeah this should be red the other one should be purple that's all right we're gonna have all kinds of color on this before we're done I'm not gonna worry about it a little bit of purple here and I like kind of like my colors to flow together if you don't then you know you can go a little slower or you can let areas dry in between, or you can kind of blot it up with a towel. I think maybe I'll add some of that purple over here. It's already the wrong color. Yeah, well, I'm not going to mess it up anymore. <laughs> All right. Now for the sentiment down here, I think I will wet the paper first so I can really get it to flow. And I think I'll do some of that lovely, lovely purple really see it come to life. I uh, I think that's kind of fun. Almost like you could do a secret message too. I mean that would be a cool way to get the kids involved. You could have them do like a secret message and then they could um, they could share it with their friends. They could make one for their friends and they could say use your water paints, paint over that and you'll see your secret message. So the quote here that I'm using is um, don't dig up in doubt what you planted in faith by Elizabeth Elliot. But now see this is more opaque color this um it's probably a cadmium orange so it wants to stick on top of that so I think I'm just gonna wipe over that and maybe add some red on that. There we go. And you can wipe off the extra pigment later. And then I feel like it needs more orange because I just wiped off some orange so I'm going to spatter, spatter it. I always wonder why my Kindle has all sorts of watercolor paint spatters on it at the end of the day. Thank goodness I can clean it. <laughs> and if I wanted to do a little more background work, I could always, you know, go around it with some yellow. I can even let the colors bleed in there. That might be a little, a little out there. I'm not even sure I recommend that or not, but yeah, you know, I'll, I'll risk my journal so you can see how it looks. How about that? Why not? It's just a piece of paper. I wish I had done that before I decided to splatter so I could have the splatters on top. Oh, no worries. No point worrying about it. There we go. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> I just love it. But I have the foundation. See, I've got the foundation of the drawing that I did uh, with the glue. So even if I just completely obliterate this with crazy color, you're still going to see the drawing because it's there. It's, you know, there's, there's going to be that in resist. So honestly, have fun with it. The only thing to be aware of is you need to let that dry, that glue dry completely. It will take a couple hours. So maybe do it at night before you go to bed and in the morning you'll be all set to uh, to work with it. Have fun. 
it's only paper. Hope you like this tutorial, and um, I will have a link again to that glue applicator that was sent uh, to me by one of my fans who happens to have an, uh, a, uh, a little shop, and she finally had the courage to contact me. She's like, I don't know, would you would you like to try it out? She didn't expect anything in return, um, and it is a wonderful product, so um, if you enjoy it, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And, you know, just keep playing till you like it, and then you can call it a day. You know what? I think I feel like throwing a little salt on there while I'm at it. You give it a little sparkliness. That's something you might want to try, too. There you go. I think it's done. Good enough. I'll have to finish up my glue on the other side. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll just pull this up to the camera a little bit so you can see the what the salt is doing. It's not as uh, dramatic as it would be on watercolor paper, but it will just give it kind of a little bit of a snowflake, cr crystally, marbly looking effect there. And uh, there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Okay, wait, you know what? I wasn't happy with the way I f this uh, finished up, so I decided that I wanted to go on further with this um, project and um, finish it up a little bit better and hopefully be a little more organized in the first half of the video. Oh, goodness. But you can see here the uh, when the paper dried, I got all these like little crystally effects. That's what I want to explain and show you about the watercolor and the salt. It's just kind of neat. So um, you might want to give that a try sometime. Um, I decided that I wanted to accent this page. It was just not exactly where I wanted it. So what I'm going to do is use some pastels and um, I want to use some kind of tropical colors. I'm just basically going to just add some stuff to what I've already done. I don't want to cover up all the watercolor but I just feel like it's, I don't know, a little bland or something. So I'm just going in. These are children's pastels. There's nothing, nothing fancy about them. They're not expensive. I think this whole kit of 48 full sticks were like, I don't know, um, probably about $14 or so, I think. So I'm just putting in a, some pastel sticks. And also, what I like is that they're really going to be vibrant here. And I can even put it here because they're opaque over the uh, mistake green that I have, which is kind of handy. Not that the mistake was really bothering me, but it's nice to know how you can uh, cover something up if you need to. And uh, pastels definitely do that. So I'm going to have to seal this because when you use pastels, they do want to smudge. And um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And it's very easy and it's very cheap and I'm just going to use hairspray so you don't have to, you know, go buy anything expensive. If you have fixative, go ahead and use fixative. Um, but hairspray will work just fine if you don't. And you can leave the strokes like that, vivid and bold, or you can blend them. If you do blend them a little bit, then they are going to also resist rubbing off a little bit more. So I am blending a little bit and I am just kind of using a different finger when I go to a different color. It's got a really cool texture because of the glue that we drew with. So this is kind of, just kind of a fun page. While I, you know, procrastinate and think about the housework I should be doing. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I hope. No, you guys are probably all doing your housework. Probably all, you probably just put the video on to listen to while you're slaving away at the dishes. I got a sink full, I'm telling you what, I'm gonna have to go, <laughs> go tend to that pretty soon. Maybe like a little pink in there, I don't know why. And now, um, I don't, I wasn't that thrilled with the lack of, um, I'm just going to wipe my fingers off. The lack of contrast I had in my title here. So what I think I'm going to do is actually use something that's kind of fun. It's, it's just a watercolor pen. And I haven't used them in a while, so hopefully they're still in good repair. But these are just these little paintastics. And it's another kid's um, product. And um, Elmer's makes them. And Ben Fang also makes them, which is more of the artist quality brand. But they're basically water brushes with ink already in them. And they're a lot cheaper than water brushes. But they're basically water brushes. So, you know, I think I originally got them because I thought, oh, cool, they're like a water brush. And, you know, even if the ink isn't any good, I've got a water brush. I could just wash it out and have a water brush. And so, and that was the case. They were very good for that. So what I'm going to do is go over my um, journaling here. That's quite messy. <laughs> but uh, you could actually be a lot more controlled with it. But I just really want to make that stand out. And I think this is definitely going to do it. After it dries, I can wipe away the uh, ink from the resist if it's um, if it's sticking on there. And what I found actually works better than a Q-tip is to wrap 
a paper towel, wrap like a tissue or a paper towel around your finger and get it wet. And if you pull it nice and tight and you wipe over that, you'll get kind of, it'll just hit the raised edges and you won't be wiping it, the paint off the paper, which is, which is kind of cool. And the reason I'm using this rather than my regular watercolors is because it's very concentrated and vibrant and it should give me a much, um, a much better resist. So then what I'm going to do here, I think I will, maybe I'll do a few flicks of paint. Let me just move anything that I don't want to cover with paint out of the way here. Let me just see if I can get a good splatter with that. I'm just experimenting here because um, it's been a while since I used these. Let me just rinse out some clear water. Yeah, there we go. Now I got a nice good spray. And I think I want to put a border. And maybe I'll do a border with like, a, with like an orange. Let's see. Try this one here. Yeah. So these are kind of fun. So these are the uh, Pink Tastics. They used to have them at Sam's Club, and they were a steal of a deal. It was like ten dollars for um, like sixteen of them or something. I would stock up there. That, but I, I haven't seen them there in years. I don't know if it's just my local Sam's Club or if um, if that's a you know a um, choice they've made through all their. Sam's Club. I missed that I wiped away the orange splatter, so that's why I'm doing that. I can already see my um, words are standing out a little bit better. And on a nice hot day like this, I can actually take my um, my artwork outside and let it um, and let it dry naturally in the sun, and it really speeds things along. And I can add a little bit of this right on here if I want to. And you know, it's just kind of a fun way to uh, use your supplies. And I find when I have a page I'm not happy with then it's no holes barred and I feel so free just to um, just to go ahead and experiment. So think about that when you've got a when you get a page and you're not really thrilled with the way it's come out, you know, think think of it as an opportunity to learn something new about your craft. Yeah, I'm gonna give a little squeeze here. I apologize if you hear the phone ringing in the background. My kids are it's summer vacation and so oh the bin the more expensive ones clogged up on me. Um it's a summer vacation, so we get a lot of uh, lot of phone calls. Kids and their buddies. I could just throw a little bit of this. I don't know if I'm in love with that idea, this one right here, but maybe if I blend it out with a regular watercolor brush, I'll like it more. Oh yes, I like it more already. And that's also going to help lock down the pastel. In fact, I could actually just go right over the pastel that I painted there and I'll liquefy it a little bit and that will help it from smudging onto the other pages. We can go right up and do that. Because pastels are actually water soluble, so that's kind of fun there. Let's see what happens. It does kind of make it disappear if you get darker stuff underneath. And I can actually use a lighter color on top of the wet paper and it will uh, it will give you an interesting effect too. So. Really, I, I think of the art journal as kind of like a playground for where we can um, experiment and try different techniques and really get back to the joy of creating. Creating shouldn't be a job, it should be a joy. What well, happens to me, my job, but that's because I'm really, really lucky. All right, let me pause it. I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to show you what I mean about wiping off the ink. And then I think we're going to call it a day. Okay, well that was drawing. Actually, I decided to go over there and just splash and paint around, um, just to kind of get both pages done at once. Kill two birds with one stone. So if I want to clean the, uh, oh that's pretty messy. Um, if I want to clean off that and see it's already standing out more, all I have to do is wet my uh, paper towel. Just kind of put my finger in there and pull it tight. So all I have is just a very flat surface, and I can just kind of wipe over that. See how much brighter the word dig is now. If I just hold it up there. So you just kind of wipe over your um, glue or Mod Podge, in the case maybe with mine, and it will really lift up that um, that ink. And I think with these uh, Paintastic pens, I think they're a little bit d more dye based than a regular watercolor, so they really do uh, they really do stain the paper and work really well for this technique. There we go. Or any sort of like reinker would work really well. Just use what you have. And um, so over here, I love using the pastels. I really think that made that page pop a lot more. I'm a lot more happy than I was when I thought I entered, ended the video. I'm dropping pens everywhere. Um, so over here, I think maybe I'll do the same things with my fox glove and just add some, um, I don't know, maybe some like just some little dots on it because I think they're kind of like spotted. Just throw some. 
dots on there. I really hate to lose the spontaneity of this. And if any colors smudge from page to page, I'm not going to be heartbroken because it's already a big, crazy, um, colorful mess anyway. I don't want to say mess, but you know, I'm just enjoying it. And I also need to wipe off some of the ink there. I don't know if this is dry enough, but I'll give it a try. So never let a small setback ruin your future is the quote I got here. And um, I have a habit of pinning inspirational quotes that I like on Pinterest. And it's really handy for me to go back and find them if they're on my quotes board. And to finish it off, because I want to make sure that I'm not, these aren't going to smudge. If people look at my book, they're not going to walk away with hands that look like mine. Actually, they're not that bad right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is spray this with some Aquanet. This stuff is amazing. It's like shellac in a bottle. Any of you uh, ladies that were in high school in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, can attest to the fine, fine holding power of Aquanet hairspray. We just have windproof, rainproof hair. It was amazing. All right, so there you have it. A couple new journal pages done in our art journal. I hope you played along at home. Again, I'll ask you very kindly for a thumbs up. <laughs> I hate doing that twice in a video. Forget that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.